Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the latest episode here on RNFM Radio. You're tuning in to episode 140, and I just love the number 140. And why is that? Well, because it's actually one more than 139. And really what that means is that we just have one more show chock full of valuable content. And speaking of valuable content, you might be thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute here, hold on a second. Didn't we see this guest on recently on a Hangouts on Air? Um, well, you did. Because, and here's the thing, the content was totally off the rails. I, and and I, if I do say so myself, but we had some technical issues. And we're, hey, I, I'll admit it, but we wanted to iron those out. To be fair to you and to be fair to our awesome guest today, you know, we wanted this to be awesome. Because you're awesome, of course. So, you already know, we rock it out on rnfmradio.com, where you'll find out more about us and, of course, our incredible shows with the leaders and thought provokers in our industry. Now, enough is enough. Let's get to it. As you know, I'm Kevin Ross, rocking it out on the mic here in Colorado. My Rock Daddy co-host, Keith Carlson, he's also here with us as well. So, what is up, my man? Kevin, you're in rare form. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Great to see you. Great to be here with you. Um, it's a beautiful snowy day in Santa Fe. The snow is pouring down. It is gorgeous here. And I am so excited to welcome Gail Ingram back to the show. And I'm going to tell you that Gail Ingram graduated from the University of Texas. She's originally from Seattle, and she's been a registered nurse since 2005. And she's graduating from New York University in May 2015. That's only a short four months from now as an adult and geriatric primary care nurse practitioner. Gail owns Nightingale Wellness, a concierge nursing service in Manhattan, and she's the founder of NurseGale.com, which we'll be talking about at great length today. NurseGale.com provides nurses an opportunity to engage in the e-health conversation and showcases their intelligence, education, and experience. So Gail is that concierge nurse. She's a New York University Master's of Nursing student. And we have to say that she's been taking the worlds of nursing and medicine by storm in all of these different aspects of her career. And after her graduation, we're going to have a big celebration. And we <laughs> recommend now that you tune into NurseGale.com and check out what Gail has going on over there. There's lots to learn about her and lots to learn about what's happening in her life, which is all very exciting. So Gail Ingram, welcome back to RNFM Radio. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I love my new um, microphone. Well, you have <laughs> a lovely we, microphone. We love that new microphone. And for all the listeners out there and the viewers, you know, Gail, we we really did want to get this right. Gail wanted this to be right because we always say to the guests that we interview here, this is your show and it's for our RNFM radio fans out there and we want it to be right. And Gail was like, you know what? I want it to be right too. I Tell me what I need to do. And the girl went out and spent some money and invested in this show today. She's investing in you. So she Gail, did. man, amazing. She That's why I'm on fire today because she's on fire and we're about to <laughs> light it up. No, I, I had no idea how much fun this was and, until we we did our podcast last time. And uh, it, it's it's it, it's a really wonderful experience. So if anyone's considering being on RNFM, I think that I would be the I, I hands down. I say do it, and uh, because I, I've learned so much over the last um, podcast and even today before we started recording the show. Well, thank you, Gail. Flattery will get you everywhere. And it's great you have the great mic and that you're all ready to go. And you have some surprises in store for your audience that we're going to talk about today in terms of everything that's happening at NurseGale.com. So let's jump in first and talk about your concierge nurse practice in Manhattan because you've been doing that for a long time. And that's why we originally reached out to you probably about a year ago to get you on the show. And it's taken, you know, about a year to get you on, but that's okay. All good things come in time. So tell us about this concierge nurse practice that you do specifically in the borough of Manhattan? Well, I think it's taken a long time to get on your show because I decided to go to graduate school. And one of the reasons I decided to become a nurse practitioner is to cut out the middleman in my concierge nursing service. So in New York, nurse practitioners can practice autonomously. We have to have a collaborative agreement for the first 3,600 hours. But rumor has it that that's changing very soon and we'll be able to be autonomous uh, without a collaborative agreement in the future. So there's new wow. legislation brewing that's kind of um, exciting. 
So, but the collaborative agreement is not prohibitive to nurses or, or nurse practitioners practicing autonomously in New York. So, uh, I found that uh, well, the way my concierge nursing service works is that the concierge doctors in town they give me a call, and uh, night or day. So I feel a little bit like Batman, and they uh, they give me an address to go to. Uh, it's usually in the Upper East Side or it's at a at a hotel, and uh, I go and I. I administer medication or I start an IV, uh, but it's um, the physician does need to do a face-to-face -face, uh, history and physical. And I and when I work with physicians for a while, they trust my assessment skills. And having worked critical care for so long, my assessment skills, of course, are are strong. And uh, and they trust me. And we have you know rapport and a relationship. But, but you get into a gray area when the physician isn't doing those face-to-face uh, -face histories and mm -hmm. physicals and relying on the nurse to do that. So in fairness to my patients or clients, as we call them, uh, I decided to cut out the physician altogether and, and be the one who's responsible for those histories and physicals since I was doing them anyway. It made a lot of sense. Right. So, um, so graduate school, yes, has... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did cram a three-year program into uh, two and a half years, so it's um, I did have to uh, limit some of the work that I do with Nightingale Wellness. We have another uh, division of the business where we manage the health and wellness of clients, so that's on a membership basis, and uh, we'll make uh, phone calls and do home visits just to make sure that um, everyone's doing well. We accompany them to their doctor's appointments. So we arrange the town car, and then we relay that information from the physician to the family. So people have asked me, and I think that this is why you asked me to be on RN FM uh, to talk about concierge nursing, because people write in uh, through my blog, or I had a a personal blog that I started when I started my business. And um. <laughs> I was going to, I just wanted to take just a second because I love the fact that you have a bat phone anyway. And that's really cool. I mean, especially for all of those like, you know, comic buffs out there who like Batman. But that being said, I, I just love the fact, you know, st going down this path of concierge nursing and, and of course, concierge medicine. We talked about this on the Hangouts on Air before. And, and I said that I'm very familiar with it because we provide those very similar services about arranging care, uh, transportation to, to and from doctor's appointments, maybe even having somebody there to help speak on behalf of that patient if they're just not feeling well. And I also love the fact that we can really get in the homes because this doesn't necessarily have to be a high-end thing. I mean, you talk about concierge nursing, you know, hitting up maybe some, and I hate to use a word like higher-end client, but maybe, you know, people that are flush with a little bit of cash or something that can do something like this and have people come to them. But really, we can bridge those gaps with concierge nursing as well in concierge healthcare to help folks in the community, help folks in their homes because they don't feel good. And quite frankly, maybe they don't want to go to the doc and maybe it's something that we can troubleshoot at home. And it's really, really cool. And I'm glad that you're part of that. Well, ideally that's, that's where healthcare is headed is, is mm -hmm. home care. Uh, and I think it's great. We, we need to keep people out of the hospital and in their home and that preventative uh, care that, that health maintenance is really keeping people uh, independent, which is so important. Right. So, the, uh, so for for what I do, I use the the term concierge because my um, it sounds better for my <laughs> for my client right cool. for my client base. We don't like we don't like the word home care. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but but essentially that's that's what we're doing. But there is that concierge element, which is one stop shopping, and it's a kind of a when I did private duty with an agency, and this is the difference between starting my own business and working, uh, doing private duty through an agency, is that I offer this kind of problem solving, critical thinking element that agency nurses just just can't provide because it kind of gets them in trouble <laughs> a little bit. That's true. Yeah, that's a good point, Gail. I've been in home care, you know, pretty much for the 18 years of my nursing practice. So I understand those limitations. And earlier you used the word membership. And I think that's what 
I think of in terms of concierge medicine and concierge nursing, that someone pays a fee, like almost, you could say it's a retainer of some kind, and they have a doctor or nurse available to them at all times. And Kevin's talking about the for people who aren't, say, in that wealthy category who can also receive these types of what we might call concierge services or we might call something else. But it is, in a way, the future of nursing, going into people's homes. That's what I love about nursing is doing home visits. That's what just lights me up personally. So as you mentioned earlier, I have been a nurse for 10 years. I my uh, It's hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> actually a decade as a registered nurse and I found that when I was working in the hospital it wasn't a time for teaching it wasn't a time for me to make my best impact mm -hmm. I felt like uh, patients and family members are in survival mode it's a chaotic situation and and it's a pleasure for me to go into someone's home and sit down with them and have a conversation about health and wellness that's my favorite thing to do I, I would agree and, with and, that Gail no, I love that. And, and you're not limited by what the insurance companies are, are reimbursing you for. Um, and, you know, there, there's so many other limitations in this sort of traditional model of home care. And so I, that's what I love about concierge uh, medicine and nursing is that we can really over deliver on our services. And that's what I really love. Right. Well, I found that when I was doing private duty with agencies, I, I was getting in trouble. Maybe not everyone gets in trouble, but I get in trouble because I'm outspoken. And I would identify problems that people didn't know that they had, or I would recommend a second or third or fourth opinion because I know so many physicians here in Manhattan, having been a contract nurse, uh, which is similar to being a travel nurse, for about six years. So I've worked for most of the hospitals in Manhattan, and I've made a lot of uh, connections. I have a lot of relationships. So when I come into a situation that I don't think is uh, being handled well, mm -hmm. I say something and then I refer to my, my team of, of uh, cohorts. Mm -hmm. And, and when, when I worked with an agency, that was, uh, that was not good for the agency. They don't want me stirring the pot or, or creating or identifying. I wasn't creating problems, but I was identifying problems that existed before I arrived on the scene. And... I think for a business model for an agency, they're not interested in creating, or again, not creating problems, right. but they don't necessarily want to have problems. That's a great point, Gail. And, you know, I'm the director of nursing of a small home care agency in Albuquerque here in New Mexico, and we're a little different. We're a little mom and pop home care agency. Actually, I'm we're finishing our joint commission survey today. I'm actually going to see a patient after this recording with the joint commission uh, so oh my gosh! To can we up. can we wish everyone good luck to Keith today, and of course the patient. Yes. Yes. We're well. We already passed our initial survey, so I'm hoping this is just sort of a mop up operation for the Joint Commission. Anyway, um, in our agency, we encourage our nurses really to dig in a little bit, and we we don't have a social worker yet. We're hiring one soon. So if you're listening from uh, Albuquerque or somewhere in this, <laughs> please let me know that you're looking for a job. Anyway. We actually do look for the problems. We try to solve those issues. And other agencies I've worked for have not. They've really encouraged us to do what you just said, which is don't really dig too deep. Just get in there, do your IV, you know, whatever you need to do and get out. So You mean like don't color outside the lines? Don't color outside the much. line. Yeah, that's a pretty mess. Much, don't do yeah. that. So, so my yeah. philosophy for practice is, and, and this is in my life in general, no matter what I do, mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is some, a term that's used frequently in medicine, and we don't use it so much in nursing, is practicing at the top of our license. And I have always attempted to practice at the top of my license. I, and, but, but then there is, um, we're not all like that. There, there are other nurses who want to uh, kind of just do the minimum. And, 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 I, uh, and I would rather focus on those who who want to practice at the top of their license. And those are the people, I think, that reach out to me and ask me, how do I become a concierge nurse? Because they're delivering concierge care in the hospital or in everywhere that they practice. It's kind of just a sort of a philosophy or a way, a way of life or a way of being is to practice at the top mm -hmm. of your license. Story of my, yeah, story of my life. <laughs> Kevin, probably yours too. 
Well, yeah, and and the fact, Gail, that you just said that, I love, I just, I embrace what you just said, practicing at the top of your license, because I'm telling people constantly, you know, we're taking this to the next level, and the next level better be, when you dial it up, I don't want dialed up 10, I want dialed up 11, you better get there, Um, and that's what we also promote in my company as well, and I just love the fact that you're embracing that, and I like the fact, it's just a little bit controversial, because I think you've gotten some nurses off their seats right now, and they're saying, wait a minute, I practice, and then they let me think about it. You know, brothers and sisters out there, you do need to take it to that next level. You do need to practice and and take it to level 11 if you need to. Practice within your scope, of course, but really push that envelope a little bit for our patients. So I used to try to uh, encourage other nurses to, not to overuse this phrase, but to practice at the top of their license, Mm -hmm. and it's exhausting. Uh, Mm -hmm. It, it's a there's a deficit there's a, a, a knowledge deficit there's a lack of empowerment and and it's very hard to do in the hospital I think because again you're in that environment of chaos and um, it, it I found that I didn't grow in the same way that I grow uh, outside of the hospital and because right, you're pushing yourself. Well, you're constrained. Well, and, and you're I, kind of boxed in. I think you're boxed in, like in those institutions. Sometimes I don't want to be too negative, Nelly, or or je- or jelly, <laughs> okay, or Nelly. or whatever I'm saying. You know? <laughs> but but you're boxed in. Like you're not thinking outside of the box. You're not thinking where you need to be thinking as a healthcare professional because you're just inundated I with really... pro- protocol and procedure, this and that, and like. But what do you think? Tell me what you think about this situation. I really felt boxed in, and I, so as a, I, as a travel nurse in in New York, I work at one institution for three months, and then I move to another institution for three months, and it's funny at graduate, it, at, at the NYU in the graduate program, I'm in that program with nurses that I I did contracts with in New York City, and I have to apologize to them and say, I'm so sorry. I was not the happiest person when I was on your unit. Mm -hmm. And I am I am I feel like I have blossomed and the best thing for me to do was to start my own business and actually have some autonomy and decision making and uh, creative process and instead of trying to to partner and find those people in the hospital setting who would collaborate with me uh, it was hard to do on my own I, I, and I think the education that was involved I took courses at the Small Business Administration uh, at Baruch College here in New York City to learn about business and I, I would have loved to have uh, other nurses who to do that with but I mean, they're in this place in the hospital setting that is a bit stifling, I think. So, so I did that on my own, it, and it was lonely. So that's something to consider if anyone wants to start their own business. That that that, that is not always super fun. And um, but now, people come to me. Those people who want to practice at the top of their license, or those people who want to think outside the box. They come to me, so I don't have to go looking for them anymore, and it's not frustrating. Mm-hmm. And and I I am in such a um, happier place. So I, I for for me it worked. So getting out of the hospital, going to graduate school, starting my own business, and the NurseGale.com, creating this team of amazing uh, nurses who want to take their health promotion to the next level has been the best thing for me. Right. I can't encourage people enough. To, if they have an idea, to, to pursue it. And that's so exciting, Gail, you know, and I'm glad you mentioned nursegale.com because that's on the tip of both of our tongues. And also, you mentioned nurses coming to you. And that's what I see nursegale.com is about. There's a small group of nurses gathered around you at nursegale.com. And now we want to jump into what that means because this is the other aspect of your entrepreneurial venture. You have the concierge nursing, which is great, and you're getting your nurse practitioner um, degree in just four months. So that's going to take that to the next level in terms of your your autonomy to practice in that particular field. But nursegale.com is the other aspect of what you're doing, which isn't patient care. This is totally different. So let's jump in there 
And what's NerdScale.com about? Because some of our listeners probably haven't visited there yet. Well, first off, I want to say that I think that when I was in the hospital setting, I thought of patients as the, the people in the bed who, who were sick. And when I started this process of thinking creatively about nursing and, and how I could help people, I thought, wait a minute. My definition of patient is really narrow and very small because anyone who goes to the computer to learn about anything health related is a potential patient. And in the same way we don't call people uh, patients at Nightingale Wellness, we call them clients, anyone who's participating in the e-health conversation is a potential patient. But we we call them uh, Americans or it's like the general public so our goal is to 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 do patient teaching but we use a different language we don't call um, we don't really call it teaching and we don't call people who are accessing health information via the internet at patients but uh, we call them consumers they're they're health information consumers and we are providing health information so um, it's health pr it's health promotion on a on a big scale so I, I like I mentioned I started the blog when I started business so that my clients and their family members would know who I was and understand my passion for health and wellness and it got traction so people were actually reading what I was writing and in graduate school we focus a lot on teams and uh, groups and I thought the the nurse blog market is getting a little oversaturated and how can I compete with the Huffington Post health blog and WebMD if I uh, uh, okay so it makes sense to create a team right mm -hmm. and and we now have three writers, nurse writers, writing for us, four if you include me, and it's we learn so much by pitching ideas to one another. We try to set um, the c people straight. Media really uh, dictates consumers' choices and beliefs, and we try to counter that with evidence-based information. So we're having a lot of fun and we're learning with each other. It's better than any CEU uh, I've ever taken. Uh, but it, it, And maybe someday we'll be able to uh, get credit for that uh, with the licensure board or the, you know. Uh, right. I, I don't even know, know the process to do that, but it can't be that hard. Right. Well, and, and, and it's really important that you just said, you know, wait, the, the media actually steers or fears consumers on, in, in their healthcare decisions? Hashtag Ebola. No, you're right, though. I mean, um, this is what I'm really loving. This is like what I'm, <laughs> exactly. This is what I'm really sinking my teeth into here, Gail, because that's your point of difference, right? Nurses providing this information because are, aren't we, um, Keith, let's double check that. Are we still the number one? Uh, professional out there in the United States where we listed well over a decade now in a row, right? Well, I believe it's 13 years um, awesome. in the Gallup poll. We're the most trusted and we're viewed as the most honest professionals in the United States every year. The only year we weren't was when firefighters came to the fore just after 9-11. So um, nurses are really trusted. And the thing that you're doing, Gail, I think, is that you're you're working towards, or actually you already are, leveraging that trust that the public has in nurses because if they see nurse Gail, nurse Keith, Kevin Ross, RN, they see the RN, they hear the word nurse and there's an association with trust, with honesty and with with caring and I think that's what you're getting across here and what I like about nursegale.com too is that I know you're interested in preventive health of course and you're also interested in busting myths that you want to um, you want to counter the myths a little bit with evidence-based care mm -hmm. and evidence-based information. And also, you're kind of spreading out the, the subject matter that you're tackling. You know, you're tackling health, of course, preventive health and medicine, but also beauty and sex and self-care and wellness. You're really kind of opening up the conversation. And that's what I really love about it. Thank you. I think that we have a lot to learn from the wellness community and 
I think for a long time it frustrated me that wellness experts, unlicensed people just can make up a title or, or write a book and then they're experts in whatever they wrote their book about and th there's no accountability and yet they've got really slick PR and they're selling products and they're getting they're they're actually uh, on TV and dispelling or uh, not dispelling they're dispensing health information and and it, it was why aren't nurses doing that we have licenses to provide that information and more education than any other wellness profession and and I think it was that frustration that fueled me to start nursecale.com and transition it and I think there's another kind of issue that happens within nursing that I'm dealing with now that for some reason nur I, and I don't know how we came to this place where we believe this to be true but we believe that doctors own medical information and Traditionally, it's been doctors who share medical information. But we are trained to know all of that information. And we know more than I think we give ourselves credit for. And I think that empowering nurses to, to talk about it is, is so, so big. And I found that once someone writes their first article for NurseGale.com and it goes well and they see the that they're getting hits uh, and people are reading it and they think wow my voice matters and people all across the, the country and the world are actually reading my health I'm helping people I just helped um, you know like 200 people today to whatever I wrote my article about buy the best running shoes or it's fantastic mm -hmm. and right. and then they want to write more and then they and then they choose more challenging material Right. Well, and Gail, you just hit on something huge that we've talked about on RNFM quite a bit, and it's the it's definitely the big elephant in the room, and it's wearing a light or, or I'm sorry, a white lab coat. Um, all due respect, if you do wear a, a you know a white lab coat, but it is one of those things. It really does need to be a collaborative uh, presence here in the healthcare space. And you're right; it's not just physicians that own this. Uh, I mean, it's not like you can kind of parse this out on some sort of medical eBay or something and like auction it off or whatever. Like we know this information too. And you're right. People want to hear the nurse's spin on this. And I am sick and tired and tired and sick and whatever you want to call it, you know, just hashtag done with this to hear, you know, like nurses, <laughs> per, you know, nurses being portrayed in the media, you know, on television and all this stuff about, you know, we're, we're goofy, we're, we're not smart, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and they just don't portray you know, nurses in the way that we really are with, the, with the, the expertise that we can really bring to the healthcare table for our clients. And I just love the fact that NurseGale.com is really doing that. And what I want to talk about is you're looking to build a community there. You're not looking for just like these like flyby contributors, like people who say, oh, I'll write no. an ar article for your presence. You want a team. So what is that like? Are, are you having more uh, nurses and healthcare providers out there uh, well, namely nurses, reaching out to you. And what does that look like? How can someone become a part of, of your team? Because you do want a team, and I know you got to vet that as well. Like, you're like, hey, this is the long haul here. You know, we're building this presence. So you don't, you don't want flybys. Right. So we do a lot of editing, and we double-check all of uh, the research, the citations that are associated with every post. We, um, we, there's a there's a voice. So each nurse who writes for NurseScale.com maintains their own voice, but there is uh, one overall voice. It's an evidence-based uh, professional presentation that that we provide. So, um, so and and I'm also teaching nurses to write, and we have a formula that was created by our media advisor Jeff Dotchis, who is. Uh, who's amazing and we're actually fostering growth so the random contribution or guest post we don't even use that word but like guest post is kind of a we don't like it <laughs> because because we need a, a core group of nurses who are learning from one another and it's a continued effort and I think in order to be critical of one another in the way that we are, there needs to be trust, and that doesn't happen when 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 
and this is what the Huffington Post does. Like, there's not a community there. There's there are people who are submitting posts and they get published, and that's great. They get a lot of exposure, but but there's no growth for that person. There's a spike in their in their visits to their website or that one piece, but it's there's no longevity. And what we're trying to establish is um, a, a lasting platform, and and we want this to grow. And in order to do that, we need we need core team members. And if anyone wants to join that team, uh, there's so many places on the website on nursegale.com to connect with me. So they can go to the um, the uh, sub, I don't even oh my gosh on my own website I don't even know what the tab is at the top that says contribute. I think it says contribute. Uh, or they can even um, there's a widget on the, on the side ask nursegale. They can say, "How do I? How do I write for you?" It's, there's so many different ways to connect on the, on the website. But right. well, and that's good because that you want that ease of of use to be able to reach out to you. But again, I just love the fact that you just said longevity because we're we're in it for the long haul, sister. And I love the fact that you're bringing other nurses along with that so that you can really build awareness, not only for nursing, but again, for the clients that we're trying to reach out there with all of these, you know, tips and tricks and healthcare and just having a nursing spin on it. Just totally love that. Right. And I think what's different about what we're doing is that we don't talk about nursing. We are nurses who have licenses, but we don't talk about behind the scenes issues. Mm -hmm. People don't want to know about hospital politics. They don't want to know about the plight of nurses. Nurses want to know about the plight of nurses, and they want to share nursing information with each other, but we're reaching a much larger audience. So when nurses blog or communicate to other nurses or target other nurses for their products, they're reaching a market of three million, over three, um, three and a half million nurses in America. And we're trying to reach every American. So our market's much That's a whole larger. lot more people. That's right. Just, in, just a little know, bit. Like, I think there's probably like a couple percentage points difference there. Something like that, right? <laughs> right. Like at, and, like at my blog, Gil, I write specifically for nurses and healthcare professionals. And I know it's a niche. And that's the niche where I've chosen to kind of, kind of you know, plant my flag, at least for now, at this point in my life. But nurse scale is really something different. You know, when we Google a particular condition like say I want to learn about oh I don't know um, home treatments for psoriasis and medical treatments for psoriasis not something that I suffer from personally but I've had many patients who do so WebMD might come up in Google or maybe you might even find Dr. Andrew Wheel or some of the other providers out there who really blog about these Dr. Oz maybe so Nurse Gale wants to be on that first page of Google when someone looks for advice on either Everything. a mission or even maybe a, a beauty or other type of question that's not necessarily health related quote unquote is that true Yes. So we so we have fabulous search engine optimization. It's kind of mm-hmm. um, one of our secrets. Um, and I mean, we have. I live in New York City, and I have um, access to some amazing people. Not in healthcare. I'm, I'm, I have access to innovators in. Um, in web technology, in and I, I have a great team aside from my nurse writers. And so we, therefore I have great SEO. And we are on page one when you search for many of the articles that, that we, not searching for the article, but let's say um, like Jennifer Lopez just endorsed a fitness app and a line of supplements. So when you Google JLo fitness app review, the last time I checked, we were number one uh, on the Google search, and we were I s- searched it a couple of different ways, and we were between the first ranking and the fifth ranking uh, for for that, and and check to see where our articles are are uh, falling in in the ranking system, and we are really strong and we do, it's very exciting my mom gets a phone call whenever we beat uh, WebMD or any of uh, the magazines um, like 
uh, women's health or uh, so whenever we rank higher <laughs> then the, oh, my mom always gets a gets a phone call and uh, I let I let her know she's a big fan of nursing it's okay to be proud of that no it's okay to be proud of that and you're and you're well, right, we're growing I, no it's good and you're right I did do the same check and what you can do because sometimes when you go to your own website and you try to search that in Google it will start pushing things up a little bit closer because it knows that that's a site you visited. What I did on one of my computers that's not synced with another one, that's not synced to any of my accounts, I just did a fresh Google search from the last time we did our Hangouts on Air, and you're right, you ranked actually number three on page one of Google um, from a computer that I had never accessed your website from. Hmm. And so congratulations, so it worked, so, yeah. So, so nurses, uh, you know, don't, if, unless they have a personal interest in technology, they're, they're, they really, they ask, well, why would people look for health information on nursegale.com? Well, when when someone uses Google to search, they can't help but to find nursegale.com when we're popping up as one of the, you know, the top five uh, options to, to click on. And then when they see nursegale.com, so uh, they see nurse, and they're going to choose that before they choose some random fashion blogger who's giving out wellness advice, right? So, Gwyneth Paltrow gets in a lot of trouble with her Goop website, <laughs> right, and right. Um, we actually no. think we need to partner with her so she gets some credibility. So she needs a Nurse Gale column on on the Goop website. So we have a lot of um, stra strategy behind the scenes that's happening, connections that we're making. Uh, so it's it's going to it's going to be big, and whether and, and nurses I or understand it right now, they will when. They see us splashed all over the place. Right. And, and that's the thing, Gail. I mean, but, you're right. It is going to be big. It is big. And, and it's big because, and it's going to be even bigger, bigger now. We're going to push this stuff out on RNFM radio. It's going to be huge. And I love the fact that you're doing it. You're thinking like an entrepreneur, thinking like 10, 15 steps ahead. I think she is an entrepreneur, Kev. Oh, no, no, she is definitely. And she is walking <laughs> that walk, talking the talk and walking the walk, right. because you just talked about, you know, 10 or 15 steps ahead here. You've got a lot of things in the background that you're working on. And that's something that, you know, that's advice that I give to entrepreneurs. You know, you do that one thing really, really well, but eventually you got to step outside of that and do more things really, really well and have a lot of balls in the air at that same time. Mm -hmm. Now, Gail, I just wanted to chime in here. Kevin was talking about thinking like an entrepreneur and a lot of our reader, a lot of our listeners may be budding entrepreneurs or maybe they already are, or maybe they're nurses at the bedside who are just thinking, huh, I'd like to do a little something on the side. You know, I don't want to start a full on business, but I'd like to do a little something apart from my clinical work. So what would you say to the nurses out there who are really just starting out, or maybe it's even in the formative stages, they haven't even put together any type of plan. It's just more of a kernel of an idea. What's something you would say to them just to inspire them or help them take the next step, just that next first step to move forward in terms of their goal or what they'd like to do? I think that's such an individual question mm -hmm. because I think one of the reasons I started Nurse Gale or, or blew it up um, in, instead of being a personal uh, blog is because uh, I was that new nurse at the bedside and I knew that I could be doing so much more or that I, I wasn't feeling that warmth inside of me like I thought that I would feel. I felt um, a lot of terror. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and frustration and this is not what I was trained to do and I felt that I didn't know how to get from point A to point B and it took a really long time for me I, I, I didn't feel I never met anyone who who was doing what I wanted to be doing so I hope that those new nurses if they or nurses who have been at the bedside for a long time who have a lot of experience but are looking for something different I hope that they reach out to me and and maybe have an interest in writing but uh, if they so it so it really depends I also wanted to do private duty so I that's another reason why I started Nightingale Wellness so but but it was hard if anyone is thinking about doing that they can always reach out to me I'm accessible um, uh, again through through nursegale.com and I I think the first thing that I did was to start an LLC so that I would be covered 
when I did do private duty nursing and and I think even investigating what I needed to do through the Department of Health was a creative process and it helped me to feel energized when I went back to work at the hospital because I knew that I was doing something on my own. Uh, I think also reading helps. There are a lot of great books and I, I didn't feel so alone when I read about other nurses having similar problems. Um, what book did I read? It was by Heron and it was, have you read her stuff? They're, the books are old. but No, um, no. not personally anyway. But I'm going to look that yeah, up so now. It was a, please do. And she, she had a compilation of stories about nurses and and it, it and this is not like chicken soup for the soul or the nurse's soul. <laughs> this is like mm -hmm. real um, nursing experiences that aren't pretty. And I realized, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. And I think that that helped a lot too to kind of like s stay focused and strong so that I was able to make the, the leap to do something else. But I'm not sure that everyone's looking to do something else. I think that a lot of people who are working at the bedside aren't like me. They're, they're satisfied. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Well, I can definitely, I mean, there are people because I, I, you know, the innovative nurse show, that podcast, um, has really kind of exploded because, and people come to me just like you for, for nursegale.com for that nursing spin on things. They want to hear from an entrepreneur. Nurses especially want to hear from an entrepreneur who know, who get nursing first and foremost. Like I understand nursing because I am a nurse. And then I also get the business aspects and the entrepreneurial aspects. And so they, you know, they, they tell me like so much, like, oh my gosh, I love the show, not because of the business stuff, but, but you get me and you can kind of help mentor me or coach me through this process because you totally get that system. Whereas, you know, going to just a regular uh, podcast who just talks about, you know, general business, which I can still do that too, because I have other businesses that are not nursing. Um, mm -hmm. They still kind of align with that nursing perspective. But, you know, Gail, I think, it's, it's one thing that I'm not afraid to say, and I know that sometimes we are afraid to say it, is that, you know, as Keith said, is it something that you can do part-time? And I think writing, you can certainly do that and dip your toe into the entrepreneurial space. But a lot of times what I tell nurse entrepreneurs is that, or, you know, these budding um, opportunists out there, sometimes if you're working full-time at your other job, you might actually be working almost full-time at this entrepreneurial thing. I'm not saying that you got to go out and quit your job tomorrow. Although I do think that sometimes your career or your job can get in the way of your entrepreneurial endeavors. Like I think it can really slow you down and be an anchor. Um, but that's just me because I jump in the deep end on everything. But um, it, it is one of those things where I think if you're going to try to straddle, straddle uh, this, this career, this job that you have, and then also do the entrepreneurial thing, expect to work at least another you know, 20, 30, or 40 hours at that on top of it. And it might seem overwhelming, but yeah. sometimes that's what it takes to get it done. And then as that, you know, that entrepreneurial endeavor is taken off, then you can start shedding those hours on the other thing you're doing. So true, Kevin. I can attest to that completely. And I've talked about that to you on the show before. I'm still the director of nursing of a home care agency. I've been able to actually finagle my way into telecommuting to a large extent and I only go down to the office once a week and do everything else by Skype and email and phone and text and I see patients too here and there but it that is a process and you do jump into the deep end Kev you you really do and a lot of us are less uh, no we're more risk averse than you <laughs> and I'm still holding on to this one job this part-time job and some of us have different reasons for doing that and th it's great for you to mention jumping into the deep end you didn't even wear water wings I don't think I think you just nope. jumped. you <laughs> nope, weren't even I didn't yeah I think you wore a bathing suit did you no no no, uh -uh. no I just nope. went in just buck naked <laughs> right into the deep end and I said hey everybody I'm here let's go oh and my it was like, who, who in the world is that guy get him Dude, out of there that's no that's a really good point is that when when we start doing something new we have to be prepared to look silly. Sometimes I'm not saying that you looked silly, Kevin. I did. I looked. I, I, I am, looked like a total idiot, but I was doing it, man. Well, I was doing it, and I was rocking it, and I was like, "This is mine. I'm doing it." So I did it. Well, there, there is owning it. That's part <laughs> of is, it. But, but also not being discouraged when other people don't love what you're doing as much as, as you love it. That's important, and it's humbling. I think there's a a lot. Um, 
and not to be discouraged. So I think that if there was advice to give to someone who's trying to do anything new, uh, it would be don't, don't be discouraged and reach out and develop a team, develop relationships. Right. And, and I think also it's important to look outside of, of nursing. And I know that other people have found success looking within nursing, um, but I, I find that I like a diverse team. And I, I don't think that NurseGale.com would have as much success if I hadn't gone outside of nursing and uh, found leaders in different fields to advise me. And that's another right. thing with, um, with money. Uh, un understanding infrastructure and growth and scalability with a business. It's, mm -hmm. it's not what we're trained to know. We start IVs. We save lives. We, we do not really um, even speak the language of business. And to find uh, consultants uh, who, who I actually, my, my tax man is amazing, Joe Conte. He, um, his wife is a nurse. So he gives me financial advice, understanding where I'm coming from and what I believe about money from the nurse's perspective. Mm -hmm. And he's able to right. speak the nursing language, but also speak the, the the money language. And his advice is spot on. He does my taxes every year, and he he has connected me with uh, an amazing bookkeeper. He's so he has facilitated relationships uh, for for me that have helped me to grow. And I think that it's it's really important to have a, a solid team, right? And I, of people I, who know. Great. Well, right. I, well, I was just going to say diversity is key, not only in nursing, but you're right. Um, you do need to have other people around you, you know, cool people like us, right, Gail? I mean, you know, just hook up with us and uh, we'll yeah, help I'm you so along the way. I'm so glad I met you. I'm so right. glad I met you guys. Yeah. And we feel the same way, but you're right. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm about to pitch like a marketing strategy for a company that we provide those concierge nursing services to. Um, I've been with this company, contracted with them for many, many years. And I can definitely speak that different language because I did that before I was a nurse. And so they, they always say, like, you really can speak two different languages. You know, all this clinical stuff that we don't understand and all this marketing stuff that we're trying to understand. But you're right. You need to surround yourself, break out of those boxes, not be so confined, and really surround yourself with people that are even outside of your industry and outside of that comfort zone of yours because they're gonna, that's going to bleed into you. You know, you're going to learn, you know, osmosis, sucking, you know, just absorbing it. You're a sponge. It's getting into your bloodstream. And you do need to surround yourself with a very diverse team that is outside of the healthcare space. Right. Great medical metaphors there, Kevin. Well, you know, that's, I how, I, that's how I roll. Yeah, yeah, I know. The metaphors are important. And what, Gail, what were, you know... Oh, no, no, go ahead. Go I was ahead, just going to say what... Gail, well, I was just going to say what, you know, just let Gail chime in there for that sec. Yeah. Well, I don't think people realize that I have... A, I'm a second career nurse. So while I have extensive nursing experience... I was in uh, print media production and fashion before I went into nursing, which is another reason why NurseGale.com is so aesthetically pleasing. And it's um, I'm I also um, had have a, a little bit of a writing background, and I uh, so that, so when I wanted to hone my writing skills, it's it had been a while. I started writing a health column for NYU, and it's the only, it's the first uh, health column in any NYU publication. And then I learned, they're so wonderful. These and these are not nurses. So I learned journalism from journalists, and uh, through my experience working at the Seattle Weekly as well. And I learned how to edit, and I learned how to, um, because when my work is edited, it helps me to be able to edit other nurses work and I'm really able to transition their writing from nursing writing to uh, health writer writing or uh, a wellness experts perspective instead of a nursing perspective and that's a different language as well so reaching consumers in their home and there are ways to kind of spice up our health information to make it more appealing and, uh, but I think having that background in media production has, has really helped us. And I think that the, the second career nurse really brings some unique 
uh, uh, ness, uniqueness to the table. Well, and, and, and I love that uniqueness. And of course, you know, Gail, this has been awesome. You know, just totally rocking it out on the mic with you today. My, I mean, my mic is almost dying. It's telling, it's like raising a, like a white flag or something. It's like, dude, I'm melting. Can't you see? <laughs> but, but, you know, and sort of in closing here on the show, I, I just, what's in, what's the future for Nurse Gail? I mean, obviously you're kind of elbowing, you know, to the side, the HuffPost health section so that Nurse Gail, you know, is really kind of getting up there. And of course you're collaborating or really kind of being seen as an authority just along the lines of WebMD and, you know, those pretty prolific magazines out there. What can we expect from you? What are we going to see? Because I know it's going to blow up. All right. We're going big. All right, and Love we are it. going. So we have an end game, and I think I think having that experience w with owning a business and understanding that you need an end game when you go into something, kind of, you, we're just not doing this to make, I don't know. It, it, there's more to it than empowering nurses, but we want to get huge, and um, I'm hoping that we'll sell to uh, AOL or Johnson and Johnson, and mm -hmm. and and with it that content. Um, it is it's only going to grow and get bigger and become really a viable health resource for for everyone, a library. And and I think so. Huffington Post was bought out, of course, and mm -hmm. um, and 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 Johnson and Johnson, we know, loves to partner with nursing. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so I I love that you think that, it's so big. Just, love it. Those are just two examples. Which, um, we have more. We have a list of options where nursegale.com can go, but it's it's not something we're doing for fun. It's uh, the real deal, and uh, we're we hope that um, nurses who are serious about about becoming health writers or really want to reach more people with their health information will contact me. Right. Well, and speaking of contact, you can hit up Gail Ingram at nursegale.com over there. Gail, I don't want to spill any more, any more things here because you know what? We're going to have you back on the show, and I bet you we're going to collaborate on some other shows together because I know we're going to blow this up, and we're both going to be hanging out in the deep end um, mm -hmm. without floaties and stuff. But don't worry, I'll have a bathing suit on. You know, don't, I'll, I'll keep it, I'll keep it on the <laughs> level there. Thank you. But let's get into Thank the, you, you know, let's, let's definitely kind. get into that. But this has been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed uh, this show today, Gail. I mean, wow, the value that the listeners are getting today. And I can't wait to have you back on the show. You're so flattering. Can I just, <laughs> you know what, I, I do want to say, I have gone through your library of, of podcasts. And in so many of your shows, the guest says, you know, if nurses would only speak up. If nurses only had a platform to share what they know, or to really showcase their expertise, or mm -hmm. um, and it's um, different guests from different fields all say the same thing. And I just wanted to mention my favorite book uh, because I think that it's a really great way to to for nurses to kind of start thinking about how nurses are perceived by people in in the mainstream and how media portrays. Uh, nurses and nursing and she was actually a guest on on your show she so was. Um, she was uh, Suzanne Gordon wrote um, from silence to voice along with Bernice Baresh mm -hmm. and I think um, this is a really great place to start if someone kind of is thinking about changing the image of nursing it's very inspirational that's a great point, Gil. You know, I found that book several years ago, and I wrote a review of it, and then contacted Suzanne, and we got her on the show. And it's from Silence to Voice: What Nurses Know and Must Communicate to the Public, and that is a very, very important thing. And NurseGale.com is contributing to that conversation because it's actually helping the public see nurses' expertise and experience nurses' expertise firsthand. And I think that's the one of the deep great values of NurseScale, what you're creating here. So it's very exciting. And I think that moving from silence to voice has to do with getting ourselves out there. And sometimes that means taking risks. And you're taking risks on various levels in your professional life now. And we take our invisible nursing caps off to you for what oh, you're doing. You. And, and we're, we're behind you 100%. Thank you. Thanks you're for welcome. having me on the show. Well, thanks for being with us. And, 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 you know, no, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to wish Keith good luck 
and he goes for his uh, his tour today. He gives a oh, tour. Oh, thank you. Yes, the Joint Commission. I will go to meet them soon, and I'll tell them you said hi. Will do. Well, and, it, <laughs> and, and, and for the listeners out there, for the community, if your headphones have melted off or your speakers have just totally busted because we totally rocked this today, we'll go out and get some more headphones and speakers because you're going to have great content coming your way in future episodes here on RNFM Radio. And we just want to wish you well. Continue to innovate and create. Find passion in your life, in your career, and totally just rock it out and crush it each and every day. And we'll catch you back here again on the Pulse of Nursing of RNFM Radio.